Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coats on Back Order, and we're here in episode number 45 of our Pokemon White version playthrough here on the channel. If you were here yesterday, you know we're currently engaged in battle versus Team Plasma. We got attacked by four grunts that are working under this uh, Giallo guy, one of the seven sages, and we took the first one down. We're on a number two right here. You know what? We're jumping right in. Let's go ahead and bug bite away. I know I said last time we're going for Leaf Blade critical hits, but we're gonna let. We're not gonna force that, you know? The criticals will come when they want to come. You can't make it happen. I mean, you could try with focus energy, but it ain't gonna help you. In fact, in Gen 1, it reversed the chances of criticals. Alright, what's next? My teammate here will stop you. Sure they will. Here I come, Plasma! So, what was I about to say? Not much more to say, but I guess what we're doing, we're trying to get to the top of Dragon Spiral Tower. Oh, she's got two Pokemon. We got a Poison type. That ain't good. Because at the top, Lord N is doing some stuff. We gotta go up there and see if we can stop him. And apparently there's like a legend or a myth or some other such thing where at the top of the tower is where the legendary dragon Pokemon is meant to uh, sync up with the hero and truth and ideals and whatever going on. We're gonna find out. Alright, let us start off with a Mud Slapper. Or the accuracy a little bit. It has just stockpiled, so the defenses have gone up. Pretty sure a dig attack will still do a good amount of damage. Maybe not at plus two. And if they, go to, if they go to, they could go to plus three by the time I come underground and come right back up. But where the leaf blades fail to get criticals, we could get a critical off of this dig, breaking through those defenses. Don't even need it. I'm gonna turn the fan on. That's how casual this is. All right, now one more Pokemon left. We do have a Moxie boost. Dark versus dark. Interesting stuff. Well, we're gonna get faked out at it. We're gonna go for the dig anyway. Really? They did not fake out. Interesting. Wouldn't it really be annoying if Torment meant that you couldn't complete your dig attack because it counts as dig being used twice? That would be annoying. That's not what happens though. Because you're taking that dig attack, you're dropping, Lightbird. I don't care who you're lying to. You ain't no lion. Actually, you know what? No, never mind. Actually, wouldn't a Lipard, wouldn't the name make more sense for a lion Pokemon? And then I realized, no, because it's based off of the name Leopard. So, I guess that's why it is. Our king will create a new world. Really, so? Bring it on. Can you take on four in a row? There's only one way to find out. One, two, three, four it is. Let's go. And then we'll do our team recap, because we haven't even done that yet. We've been locked in battle versus Watchhog. All right, now I kind of wanted to switch out into Erwin, you know, switch between battles, but we're just getting massively, like, pig-piled by all these guys. Let's get a critical leap blade, please. We are due. Critical hits land more easily. I am the game that tells you the attack stats and stuff. Liars. I was say, watch that be critical. Anyway, out of my way. What? It looks like you still fight. Uh -huh. In fact, I've only used two Pokemon. The other four are ready to roll. I don't understand. Why do you keep trying so hard? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let you through for now. It's like you can't stop me, so yes. All right, now the team recap. First of all, let's switch Erwin to the front because he is next in line for experience. Our level 37 Crocker Rock here with no held item at the moment. He is brave natured with the ability of Moxie, as you saw. We've got Dig, Crunch, Mudslap, and Torment. Next up is our serious natured Levani Grub at level 38. He is, sorry, he has Chlorophyll for the ability and the moves are Bug Bite, Leaf Blade, Helping Hand, and Protect. Next up is our Dewat, our starting Pokemon here in Unova region. Seaward sitting at level 38, holding on to the Mystic Water with a rash nature to boost special attack. He has the Torrent ability also to boost water in a pinch. And we've got Water Pulse, Cross Scissor, or X Scissor, Grass Knot, and Aqua Jet. Next is our Dream World Pokemon, Chuck the Beeberl. Level 39 right now, he is a lonely natured Pokemon with the ability of Moody, which I love. It's so cool. We have Headbutt, Surf, Rollout, and Yawn. Next is our Sinnoh born and raised, well, she's actually been raised more here, but our Sinnoh born Medusa the Onyx at level 39, holding the Eviolite to boost them defenses up. She has a nature of Hardy, an ability of Rockhead, and a moveset of Earthquake, Smackdown, Sandstorm, or Rock, Polish. Last but not least, Witwicky 
Our level 39 Litwick from here in Unova, of course, with the spell tag held item boosting ghost type moves. The nature is Impish, we've got Flash Fire for the ability, and we have Flame Burst, Hex, Nightshade, Willow Wisp. Alright, all that being said and aside, let us maneuver onward. And are we done with Team Plasma? The Plasma Bads? Because I want to talk to N. I want to see what's happening. I think. There's no help. There's no uh, hidden item. I think we are good to go. There's Mr. Green Hair himself, and what is this? Now, as much as I might complain about some of this stuff in this generation, this is a pretty cool scene. I believe N right there was a 2D sprite, but put into the 3D world. I don't want to take away from what we're seeing here. This white, billowy, dragon beast Yu-Gi-Oh card. Whatever. What is happening here exactly? What do you think, Chaz? How do you like the beautiful form of the Pokémon who appears before and fights beside the hero that will lead the way to a new world? It's kind of neat, I guess. Now, that's not what I saw on the box, though. I saw a black Pokémon. Now, Reshiram and I will head to the Pokémon League and defeat the champion. Well, you could try to defeat a champion right now if you want to. I'm just saying, four times. This will be the last of the Pokémon battles that hurt Pokémon so. A world for Pokémon alone. It's finally going to be a reality. Are you a Zoroark? I forgot to ask you that. And looks like I just left you. So much for that, and Looks like your plan is plunging downward. There you go. If you want to stop me, you must become a hero as well. That's right. When Reshiram's counterpart Zekrom recognizes you, we will finally be even, and then you can try to stop us. Well, what will you do? My prediction. If the future that I see is true, you will meet Zekrom. The Pokemon with you believe in you so strongly. Will you be the one who interferes with my formula for changing the world? If you want to protect the bonds between Pokemon and people, you must search for Zekrom. I'm sure it is waiting for you in the form of the Dark Stone. Hmm. Well, that's not a Dusk Stone. Because clearly it's not called Dusk Stone. Huh. Chaz, did you see what flew off just now? How could this happen? Why? That was that end guy, right? Why was he with the legendary Pokemon? I thought that was your job. He couldn't really be the hero, could he? Also, did I hear him tell you to search for the other legendary Pokemon? Calm down. First, we go back. It's more important to decide what to do next than analyze what just happened. That is faulty logic, because you would want to understand what is going on to know what to do about it? I don't know. Weird writing, I'll say. But whatever the reason is, we left the Dragon Spiral Tower. We are good. Astounding! I would never have imagined the legendary Dragon-type Pokémon would return now. That guy called N. Team Plasma's boss apparently reawakened the legendary Pokémon. He told Chaz to look for the other legendary Pokémon, and then flew away. Huh? There are two legendary Dragon-type Pokémon? Yes! Yes, there are! Who is this? I was kind of close, actually. Ooh, yeah, brother! Wife, it is an honor! That's Cedric's voice! It's been a while! How have you been, brother? There we go. No time for chit-chat! That fearsome column of fire that shot from the tower! That Pokémon has the power to destroy the brothers of the world! If it's on Team Plasma's side, and Team Plasma tells everyone to release their Pokémon... Oh, brother! No matter whether it comes from fear or, adma or the, 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 the admiration, I'm not really good at words. The world can't help but change, brother. It'll become a world where we are separated from Pokémon! Right! Moreover, the boss of Team Plasma, N, who reawakened Reshiram, apparently said to look for the other Pokémon, Zekrom. If I remember the myth, Reshiram's fiery breath, along with the other Pokémon, devastated ancient Unova in an instant. Even knowing that, N is still wait. Uh, even knowing that, N is still wanting to awaken the brother. Uh huh? Isn't it dangerous to bring back a powerful Pokémon like that? Messed it up. Whatever. We're going on. Miss, you are a very kind brother. Still, I don't know if other Pokémon. <laughs> It's fun to throw the word brother in, even especially when it doesn't make sense. Still, I don't know if other Pokemon will be able to stand up to it. Because no matter what, it is a legendary brother. I don't like I don't like the idea of taking orders from men, but searching for the dragon, the stone, might not be a brother plan. We certainly can't let Team Plaza reawaken both of them. I'm putting too much effort into the voice, my brain's not processing the words. Since I've traveled all over Unova, I have an idea of where it might be. Let's head to the Relic Castle. Brother, everyone, I'm going. 
I see. We'll leave that to you. I'm going to investigate inside the tower. Hopefully I'll find something. Then I will go with you. Fair enough, brother. So what do I do? I think I understand better now. Being able to do something for Pokemon, for somebody at a time like this, is strength. I'm sure of it. And my strength is something that is given to me by Pokemon. Okay, champion. Let's hurry. You don't even call him by name. I mean, I guess when you talk to a police officer, you don't say, Hey, Joe. You say, officer. Unless you know him, and you call him Joe. You know Alder. Chaz, this has turned into a big deal. So confusing. I don't know what to do. Are you going to the Relic Castle, Chaz? Past Route 4 in the Desert Resort. I hear that's where the Relic Castle is. I could have gone there a long time ago and done this, but I didn't. All right, anyways, let's head back into town. We're going to do a quick little heal up. And you know what? I don't have fly. Now, I can walk into the wall a few more times to give myself some time to think. What I might do is take a quick look into the PC and see if there's anybody that I can snag. Much akin to Team Snagum, except completely different. And make a quick flight back. Let's see, do I have any Pokemon that still have Fly from earlier generations? I know technically I shouldn't be using them. Now, I don't know. That does lead to the thing where you're not supposed to use the HMs on other Pokemon. Like, Nuzlocke style, you can't really have a uh, you know an HM slave, so to speak, that you keep stored away. I don't think anyone here can learn Fly, though. Nah. Huh. If we take the long way back, it does give us time to gain experience and find shiny Pokemon. What I'm gonna do... This gives us time to talk. How about this? I'm gonna give Erwin the smoke ball. That'll help us speed through. Where is it? There we go. Oh yeah, you know what? I can go back to that, uh, that guy that buys all the stuff for crazy amounts of money. Wait, he's here. Alright, let's sell some stuff. Let's sell off the star piece. He should give us a decent amount for this. <coughs> Excuse me. 9,800. I will definitely take that into the old pocket. And... Stardust. 2,000. Nice. Not bad. Alright. So we are good to go. Yeah, let's take the long way back. We can talk a little bit about how, now that we're into the month of November, I'm going to be not pushing exactly for the membership thing, but I'm going to just kind of keep reminding a little bit. Is there a quicker way back? We're just going to go through here. Uh, anyway, so yeah, the membership thing, as I've mentioned many times, you can get some cool little perks and stuff. And as of the time of this recording, I have not yet recorded the video talking about what the membership rewards are. Let's see if we can get ourselves a shiny drill bird. Nope. Is it worth the experience? Nope. So we're going to walk away. Although, every little bit of experience might not be bad. Let's see if we can get Erwin to level 38 on par with the rest of the team by the time we get back to... Uh, the Relic Castle area. Extra levels do not hurt in, a, in an RPG, not just Pokemon, any RPG. You want to level up. So, this guy's going to get in the way. Uh-huh. I guess if it's a, well, a sturdy Pokemon, we'll walk away. It's going to take two turns. Let's see if we can minimize the PP usage, perhaps. But what was I just saying about the membership thing? I don't know. Okay, that just erupted under my feet. I'll take that bug gem. Ain't bugging me none. Huh? Alright. Now, which way do we go? I'm thinking you get attacked right by the door. Do you think? Tell you what. Leave a comment down below. We still have 12 minutes based on my timer right here for this episode. Are we going to find a shiny Pokemon in this episode for the rest of the 12 minutes? Let me know down below if you think we are. And feel free to let me know which... Pokemon you think it's going to be. Now, is there a faster way back? I think that's that's the dead end right there. Never mind. But, uh, tell you what. If you can predict correctly that we do get a shiny and which shiny it is, I'll give you 10 Pokemon TCG online code cards. Nice little secret bonus. I've got plenty to work with, so I'm not going to be, you know, put out anytime soon. Just out of curiosity. Let's see what happens. Let's see if me putting that offer out there gives us the shiny Pokemon. I mean, it's crazy, but it just might work. How far back do we have to go? That's quite a ways. Tell you what. We might not make it by the end of the episode. But, tell you what. We might. I'm so uncertain. Right, I think this is the proper path, however. 
Now, speaking of shiny Pokemon, I have not encountered a shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Go for like the longest time. Which, not really, I'm lying. Because I did get that shiny Hound Hour in uh, the. It was the Giratina video, wasn't it, for Pokemon Go? Yeah. But, there's been a lot of shinies, and you know what? I'm gonna take a quick look into my Pokemon Go. I wanna see how many Drifloon have I actually encountered. I haven't found a shiny Drifloon yet. So, I'm just kind of curious. Now, from what I understand, the odds of a shiny in Pokemon Go... You know, I might be wrong on this, but someone says there's like 1 in 500 chance? I should look that up as well, but I'm going to take a look first of all and see... Why am I running from these things? I can get the experience. I am a fool. Alright, let's check the old Pokedex. It's raining now in Pokemon Go. <coughs> Excuse me. In fact, I could dig this guy, probably. I'm gonna risk it. We are almost 10 levels above Pokedex. Alright. So, Drifloon, we have seen. Uh, where are you at, Drifloon? I have seen. I guess only 126. Oh, we didn't knock this thing out. Yikes. Alright, let's do a quick little switch here. I underestimated my capabilities. Yeah, so 126, I guess. It makes sense I haven't seen a shiny one yet. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna rock move now, are you? That ain't stab, at least. You know what is stab? Leaf blade. Also, it's a blade. It stabs. Actually, it's more of a slice. That was something I found kind of interesting when I first started looking into, like, Dungeons & Dragons and playing that, you know, the RPG, which I'm sure you've heard of, where there was three different kinds of weapons in that. I never really considered the different aspects of weaponry. Where's my super potions? There we go. Where... There's slashing, um, piercing, like a spear or something that, you know, you stab with. And then there's bludgeoning, which is something that's not sharp, but like a club or a hammer or something like that. And different kinds of uh, attacks do different kinds of damage. And also it's based off of certain things like maybe this particular creature is resistant to a bludgeoning weapon. But, you know, maybe it's not against like piercing or something like that. Why am I talking about that? Well, because one of my fellow classmates has been doing some Dungeons and Dragoning, and although I'm not like an amazing person at it, like I've never played it seriously. I've always been more casual and let's just have fun with the game. In fact, I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Okay, Google. Pokemon Go shiny odds. Just to see. Alright, this thing has sturdy, we're gonna leave it. Uh, still don't know what the base odds of encountering shiny Pokemon are. It's been estimated to be 1 in 300 or more. 1 out of 25. I am apologetic, folks, for the fact that my personal adventures on Beldum Community Day lowered the percentage, lowered the, uh, the average. Yep, I had less than 1 in 25 encounter rate for shinies. At least I got the 4. Ooh, what do we get? Fire Gem. That would be good for uh, Witwicky, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, we got us a non-shiny Bulldor. It's all well and good. Uh, what was I talking about for Dungeons and Dragons? That's right. So, as I say, I've been helping one of my classmates. Like He tells me some scenarios that he has coming up. And I figure, you know what, let's just try to help out with some suggestions and stuff on how to deal with some of his issues coming up in the game. The uh, Dungeon Master always puts in specific kinds of scenarios where it's like, how do we get out of this one? Careful planning can get you out of pretty much any situation. Not just in a game, but a cub chew. But in real life as well. Alright, Erwin, can you crunch this thing? Well, I know you can. Can you one-hit KO crunch this thing? Clearly you cannot. Simply because of the indoor. Now, would you have though? Yep. You most definitely would have. Alright, let's go for the Mud Slap and... Whoop, get this thing out of here. So, as I say, I've always been more into the, uh... Well, you can see this with my Pokemon playthroughs, even Pokemon TCG. I've never been super, super serious, and I just don't have that competitive edge. I play games for fun, because to me, that's what games are there for, you know? Enjoy yourself. Have some fun with it. Where do I go? I go the wrong way. That's where I go. This, I think, is the last door to get us back out of Twist Mountain. I think in the wintertime it's a lot faster because the snow takes you right to the top, essentially. But I remember I was playing a campaign with some other people that I hadn't played with before in Dungeons & Dragons, and 
the basic scenario was our group comes up to a clearing in a forest. And I'm thinking, okay. The DM says, there's something shiny in the middle of the clearing. I'm thinking, okay. So, you know, curiosity, of course, we would probably want to go check it out. We had this one particular player, though, who was trying to give us more information. And I can't fault him for that. He was asking the DM, how big is this clearing? Oh, about a football field. He's like, okay. How sunny is it? Is it cloudy? Are there shadows? Is it obscuring any light? And, you know, that could maybe be important as well. And then we get into things like, um, how tall is the grass? Could it hide anybody who could ambush us? How tall, like, you know, how, how big, how far in is the shiny thing? Like, it went on for about five good long minutes of trying to figure out some uh, scenario and uh, some, some landscape. And I'm thinking, look, if we're going to die, let's just get it over with. I want to go find the shiny thing. See, I was never all that, I guess, smart. Which kind of makes sense, because a lot of times I find that I play characters who happen to not have high intelligence ratings. But, uh, basically, whenever you're making a character in Dungeons & Dragons, you start off by rolling, I think it's three six-sided dice. We've got Regenerator. I can switch out and heal. Uh, I think you roll three six-sided dice and you get a number, and that number you can assign to one of your stats. Now, from what I understand, you can either roll all six numbers, get six of those totals, and then choose where to put them, but another way to do it is just to put the numbers in the order of your stats, like strength, attack, or no, that's the same thing. Strength, defense, yada yada yada, I can't remember the rest of it, but I always like the thought that I want to let the uh, randomness choose for me. I'm going to roll for strength. Whatever number I get, that's my strength. Same for, uh, it wasn't defense, it was dexterity, I believe. So, it just so happens that a lot of my characters wind up having pretty good, say for example, strength or constitution, which is like your, your healthiness, your fortitude, and I wind up getting terrible rolls for both intelligence and wisdom. A shaky crap. I got it. More experience. And I kind of like characters like that, because like, it's just it's fun to play the goofball. I remember another time, uh, one of my friends actually had a character similar to that, where, you know, massive strength, low intelligence. And I think he actually chose to do it that way, because he wanted a fighter. And the group we were in, well, I actually wasn't there yet, I was showing up later on. But anyway, the group that was going through the adventure, there was three of them. The two of them came up to a door, or the other two, not the fighter, came up to the door, and they couldn't open it, and they're like, what do we do? Well, we can try, try to pick the lock, we can ask anyone if they have a key. And then my other buddy, the fighter, comes running in, he's like, I'm gonna break the door down! And he rolled, I believe, a natural 20. Which, if you don't know, natural 20, amazing things happen in Dungeons & Dragons. And he just plowed that door off its hinges, it shattered into splinters. It was a good time. I just realized we're gonna need to head back through Chargestone Cave. Although, no, it's not as bad going back the other way. I believe, based on some ledgy jumps, we can get through pretty quick. I haven't fought you? I think we're going the right way then. I want to solve all the mysteries in the world. For that purpose, I will keep fighting. Well, you would be the rival to one Mr. Robert Stack. Because, of course, he makes his living, or I say makes like he still does it. He was famous for making his living off of a TV show way back in the past, I'm sure it's probably younger than many of you watching, called Unsolved Mysteries. It was always this, oh dire hit, it was always this kind of cool show where there's, you know, all these mysterious things that happened, but there was ever, there, there was ever no answer. There was never an answer to it. And that was the whole deal of that show. It's an unsolved mystery for a reason. And I saw some memes people are showing uh, that says nothing was scarier in your in your youth than listening to this man every week tell you about things that cannot be explained. And I was like, I never found it scary. It was kind of cool. I don't think I can solve all mysteries by myself. However, if I can discover something new and help someone, I'll be satisfied. That's good. Use your expiration expirations. Yeah, use your expiration dates for good, never for evil. All right, Clink. You know, are you worth the experience? I'm gonna say no. We're just gonna walk away from this. I don't think anything here is going to give us much in the way of experience points. Now, are we back yet? I just really are we going to really go back all the way through once we're done here? 
That is for another Chaz to decide. We're going to call him probably Tuesday. No, not Tuesday. Wednesday Chaz, maybe Thursday Chaz of next week. I think we are good. Look at this. Look at this. We made it. Yay. Oh, another random attack. We got a minute left, though. We can at least leave this cave. And this connects us back to uh, Clay. His city. What was that? Driftvale City. From there, we can go across the so-called Charizard Bridge. Go back to Nimbasa City. Go south to the desert, and that puts us right at Route 4. We're not going to make it in this episode. We're going to leave Charstone Cave and call it a day. But look at this. I'm actually remembering the region. Unless I completely messed up all those names and the path, and I look like a fool. But then, how is it any different than any other day here on Pokemon, on Pokemon Chaz's channel? Yep, I'm Pokemon Chaz. I capture professors. That's what I do. Hello, Joltik. We're going to not eat a berry. That's not very nice. All right, no more attacks. Now, if you did make a guess at a shiny Pokemon, unfortunately, it didn't happen. So those 10 code cards I'm going to hang on to for the time being. But, of course, I will have them available for members of the channel. Speaking of which, if you want to stay apprised... That's the right word, I think of the channel and updates and such, you can join as a member now. There's a link, no, I don't think there's a link in the description. If you're watching this video on the YouTube gaming app or gaming.youtube.com, there should be a join button beneath the video. You can join in as a member and get some cool members only perks, which I'll have a video up for you can check out on the main page of the channel. But if you want to just subscribe for some more regular Pokemon content, you can do that as well. And uh, stay up to date on the adventures of Professor Chaz through the world of Pokemon. Now, as for today, if you enjoyed today's episode, folks, thank you for watching, first of all. Feel free to let me know with a like down below, and if you missed any Pokemon White episodes along the way, as always, the link in the description can take you right to the playlist and get caught up on all the adventures thus far. If you want to see any more videos from myself, I'll have some links during the outro for you to check out. And for some more content from Professor Chaz, I've got my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord all linked in the description. You can check that out as well. But that's going to wrap things up here today. So once again, folks, thank you for watching. Professor Chaz is signing off, and I'll catch you next time.